Hi, welcome to You Can Talk. My name is Ruth Finney and I'm so very glad you clicked here because this is the channel you've been looking for. A channel solely dedicated to helping you talk your way to healthy relationships. If you're married or dating, if you have some level of family or friends or people you work with, then somewhere in at least one of these areas, I know you've struggled with communication. If you're ready to experience some real change with your relationships and you're willing to put some simple principles into practice, become a talker, subscribe to You Can Talk, and walk with me through the user's manual as we discover some revelations in communication that you can incorporate into your life. Here, we will tackle some of the most common and challenging issues we all face so you can talk your way to healthier relationships. In today's episode, I'll be discussing choosing your battles. I remember when I was a kid growing up in black culture, it was a big thing to get into a word battle or what we called battle rap. They were typically done in public and usually always drew a crowd. They were mostly for the purpose of impressing people with our lyrical skills and talents, but really, it was just our way of expressing our voices and establishing bragging rights. It gave you some clout in the community. And if you were pretty good at it, it was a nice boost to your reputation. It made you a somebody. We even had names we made up. So like, instead of Ruth, I was Lady R. Or instead of Derek, you might have been D-Nasty, the lyrical genius. Anyway, you get my point. <laughs> the content usually was informative, but mostly included boasting or insults. However, if the personal put downs were taken too far, it would actually start a physical fight. That being said, people were usually pretty cautious as to who you were willing to enter into a battle session with because you wanted to be assured of a possible win. The ramifications of losing could mean a loss of pride, death to your reputation, and if you weren't careful, actual physical pain. The greatest rappers always had something in their bellies and were always ready to do battle. But as amateurs, we weren't always willing to just step up into a battle just because it presented itself, especially if you weren't prepared. The bottom line is that when you knew what was at stake, you were more intentional with your presentation and your objectives were clear. You battled to win. No matter what culture you grew up in, I'm sure you willingly and unwillingly have had to enter into some type of battle yourself. It may have taken place in the form of the debate team, or on a job in competition for a promotional pitch, or in a courtroom. Heck, I've even seen some pretty intense battles in PTA meetings and church board meetings. But if you think back even further, you've most likely been battling since you were a kid battling over who was going to go first at whatever it was you were doing. Who was going to get to sit in the front seat of the car? Who should have to wash the dishes or simply decide who was going to get to watch their favorite TV show that evening? We have developed a culture of battling over what we want, for what we think is right, and just an overall mentality of hashtag winning at everything in life. Everybody wants to be a winner. We even want our kids to be winners because they represent us, right? I mean, I can't have my kid on the bench when I was a star athlete on my team or a top performer in my class. Listen, there's nothing wrong with battling for the win, but all too often we are willing to overlook the surrounding collateral damage that occurs just for the satisfaction of saying we won. We got our way, or we proved a point. And while we're in the midst of celebrating, we also may have unknowingly placed another brick in the barrier between us and a loved one, or even put a final nail in the coffin of our relationship. And when things fall apart, or people walk away, we're left wondering, what on earth happened? I thought we were cool. Choosing to enter into a battle is often based on impulsive reactions to underlining emotional feelings. These emotions come from feeling like we're misunderstood, constantly attacked, and especially feeling disrespected. 
other times, it's just feeling frustrated with the idea of having to deal with the same issue over and over again. We get tired of having to defend our decisions and our actions, and we start to feel like we're not being heard. Or maybe you feel like you're not being taken seriously, or maybe not even taken into consideration. <laughs> Therefore, rather than exhibiting control, we lash out. Next thing you know, one quick spark of the tongue and we've set forth a blazing fire that ends up causing way more damage than we ever intended. When these types of ignitable emotions lie beneath the surface of our relationships, a simple comment said in casual conversation can turn into an all-out war. Next thing you know, you're hearing things like, I can't believe you just said that. Oh, here we go again. I'm so sick and tired of arguing over this. Are you kidding me right now? Why can't you just let that go already? That mouth of yours. You have some nerve. It's always something with you. You're so sensitive. It's like walking on eggshells around you. Any of these sound familiar? I thought so. And I know that was a pretty cleaned up version. So why do battles come our way and how do we decide which ones we're gonna take on and which ones we're going to leave alone? Well, let's take a look at our user's manual and see what the manufacturer has to say about battles. Let's go to the book of James. A quick history on James. He was not one of the 12 original disciples. He became one of the leaders of the church at Jerusalem after witnessing Jesus' resurrected body. He was considered one of the pillars of the church. We'll look to this book because James believed that faith that does not produce real life change is worthless. And isn't that why we're here? Because we're ready to see some real change. So in James chapter 2 verse 17, he states, So also by faith itself, if it does not have works, is dead. In our case, this means that I can have all the faith and intention in the world to keep my cool, hold my tongue, and not act out of selfish motives. But if I'm not actively working to put that into practice, my faith is worthless. James chapter 4 verses 1 through 4 says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend to the world becomes an enemy of God. Woo! Those are some tough words. James wasn't a tongue biter. He made no excuses for those unwilling to see truth. He's basically stating that we choose to battle over the wrong things for our own selfish desires. Things such as selfish ambition. Because in the back of our minds, we usually have our own agenda. We battle with pride because often we're unwilling to face the truth. We battle for getting our way because, I mean, let's be honest, it feels good to gain control. We battle for proving our point because at the end of the day, hashtag winning is what matters. Then he goes on to say in James chapter 3, verse 16, For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder in every evil practice. Wait a minute. What does that mean, disorder in every evil practice? What does order and evil have to do with us taking on a battle? Well, guess what? Evil has everything to do with the battles we find ourselves in. When we fight with someone we're in relationship with or choose to take on a battle with someone, we think we're entering to the ring with this person we're struggling to deal with. But we're not, at least not fully. The person we see is just being used. Remember, we are vessels with open portals to the good and evil of a spiritual world. When we choose to take on a battle, we are literally entering into the ring with the enemy. And he is always a challenging opponent. 
And the reason is because he knows our weaknesses. He knows our areas of vulnerability. He knows what sets us off and precisely where to hit us. In our user's manual, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Have you ever found yourself saying, Ugh! I want to work on my relationship with this person, but they always know exactly how to push my buttons. This, my friend, is no coincidence. The enemy will use anyone and everyone we know, especially those closest to us, to try to alter our focus and take us down. He shows no mercy and always wants to take us to the point of no return. That's why it hurts so much and we take it so personal when the people we love the most hurt us the deepest. Even those who walk in salvation and follow the ways of Christ fall subject to the enemy's tactics. He works to steal our trust and confidence, kill our faith and destroy our best intentions. He wants to devour our relationships and everything we've worked to build. Why? Because his sole purpose is to disrupt the order of God's plans for our lives. The enemy knows the details and the blueprint of God's plans for us. God has a blueprint for your life. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. The enemy wants to destroy that plan. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The enemy knows that if he can keep us angry, doubtful of everything, distracted, and ultimately unfocused, he can deter us from moving in the direction of God's purpose. When we know that, we can look at each battle we've been in, or the ones we may choose to enter in, slightly different. One of the most valued skills we can obtain is to learn how to recognize the enemy when he's working in our lives. When we see the battle approaching or suddenly presents itself, rather than just reacting from our emotions, we have to take a moment and get clear with our intentions. Decide, what am I battling for and what is most important here? Am I battling to prove my point or to develop an understanding with this person? What's crucial? Am I battling to get my way or to learn how to work together with this person to accomplish the goals we have set? Or what's critical? Am I battling to gain control or to sustain a relationship of mutual respect and or love with this person? And what can be let go of? Can I let go of my pride and selfish desires? Or am I willing to let go of letting this person know that their thoughts and opinions and this relationship matters to me? And most importantly, What are the possible long-term effects if I choose to take on this fight on both sides? So what are some of the harmful effects? Things such as winning and celebrating alone, gaining control and potentially decreasing their value or worthiness, tarnishing my character, losing my witness and damaging my relationship. But then there's also some beneficial effects such as growing my character by working to be open to reason and understanding, creating cohesion and not division, developing a relationship of value with this person. James had a lot to say about arguing, selfish motives, how we should respond to others and the power of the tongue. James chapter three, verse 17 says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. But if I could boil it all down to how we should approach battles, it would be found in James chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. 
because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. When we find ourselves stumbling into battles with our words and fighting against people we're trying to sustain good relationships with, I have four talk rules that I live by. The first one is the T, take a moment. Take a moment to assess why is this presenting itself? The A is alter your approach. Is it a battle worthy of entering in? And if so, how do I want to approach it? The L is listen to what's being said. Is there potential for me to learn and grow? Or will I just be shrinking and being distracted? And the K is know your intentions. What am I truly hoping to learn or accomplish for the good of all parties involved, not just myself? When I follow these four rules, battles usually end in victory for everyone involved. And if you find yourself in a place where you just can't control your emotions, then stop. Step away. Close your mouth. Be still and let the Lord fight that battle for you. God has a way of humbling and silencing the most difficult of people. If we can just learn to stop feeling the need to take on every battle that comes our way. If it's pointless or you don't know what to say that would be beneficial to the situation, hand it over to God and say, God, this is too much for me to take on. I'm giving it over to you and trusting that you will work things out in a way that will be best for all parties and let it go. He's always ready to do battle for us and he can handle our battles so much better than we can. If you can relate to any or all of these communication struggles and are tired of the seemingly endless cycle of communication barriers that are keeping you from the relationships you desire to have with others, then become a talker. Subscribe to You Can Talk, select that notification bell, and meet me here on Thursdays for the next episode where we'll be discussing how to fight fair if we've chosen to take on that battle. If you're ready to experience some real change in the communication in your relationships, commit to discovering how you can tame the tongue, approach with compassion, listen deeply, knock down the barriers, and talk your way to healthier relationships. Let your communication be the light of God's love the world so desperately needs to hear. Leave a comment below and let me know what will be your tip of the week or talk-inspired practice that you're willing to commit to working on. Tell me, how will you choose your battles this week? Will you work on taking a moment to assess your true intention? Will you stop to consider the short-term and long-term effects? Or rather than focusing on winning, will you work to focus on being open to reason and understanding and collaboration rather than confrontation? Whatever it is, I'm rooting for you and I'm praying for you because you can talk your way to healthier relationships. Thanks for watching and if you would, please like and share this video and I'll see you here next Thursday.